Thank you so much, members of the press. My name is uh, Sidi Otieno. I'm the president of the Civil Society Reference Group, which is a network or a movement bringing together social movements, CBOs, faith-based organizations, NGOs, and international NGOs in Kenya with the name of uniting and amplifying our voices on matters that are local, national, and international. So today we are gathered here uh, to be able to, uh, first of all, we want to thank the people of the Republic of Kenya for conducting themselves peacefully uh, during the election process before and even after. It shows that the people of Kenya are mature enough and they have given the institutions uh, that are charged uh, to govern the elections time uh, to do their work. In fact, uh, contrary to some uh, expression that there are going to be violence across the country, we are very much pleased uh, that there is relative calm across the country and we uh, want to urge uh, Kenyans to continue remaining peaceful as uh, the various institutions that are charged with ensuring that sub public service delivery is done are being constituted. As a civil society, first of all, we want to say that uh, uh, given the verdict that was uh, provided by the Supreme Court yesterday, and, and the law says that it is the final, which means that now we have a government. And as civil society, our responsibility is to hold the government to account. And we want to tell the coming, incoming government that in instances where they'll be respecting the constitution and delivering the, delivering the services as per the constitution, we shall support them. But when in instances whereby they'll be going against the constitution or maybe trampling upon the rights of Kenyans, then as the CSRG, we will not hesitate to call them out even to organize demonstrations, to go to court, to ensure that the constitution is implemented. As a sector, we are concerned. And one thing that is dear, dear to us is the Public Benefits Organizations, or the PBO Act, that was enacted in 2013. The Jubilee government that was elected in 2013, 10 years later, has refused to commence the PBO Act. And the PBO Act is aimed at ensuring that there's an enabling environment for, for the social movement, the civil society organizations in Kenya to operate under self-regulation. But that act has not been commenced since 2013. What we're telling the incoming government is that we expect them to, uh, to, to commence the PBO Act with immediate effects so that the benefits that in that, are in that act can start a coup to our members across the country who are doing a very big role. We also want to tell the government that CSOs, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations and social movements have a very big role to play in supporting governance. We expect the government to encourage public participation involving the sector in decision-making processes. We also want uh, uh, the government to ensure that there are some issues that were raised by the Supreme Court. For example, if I might point one of them, the Supreme Court in the ruling read by the Chief Justice said that Kenyans don't have faith on the IBC. I also want to say that given the ruling that was up, happened yesterday and the fact that the petitioners have said that uh, uh, they are uh, agreeing but not, they are accepting but not agreeing with it, it means that there is also a deficit of trust in the Supreme Court. I think what is needed now moving forward is to ensure that some of the pronouncements that were done in 2013, the Mutunga led team, 2017, the Maraga led team, and now the recommendations need to be implemented. We also have issues that were done like for, with the Krigler, which said, stated that uh, commissioners should be appointed at least two years to elections. We saw some IBC commissioners being appointed six months to elections. That means that as a country, we are still not following the recommendations of the institutions that uh, we are setting out as a country. And that's why we are saying that uh, we expect the incoming government to move with speed and ensure that we rebuild trust in the institutions uh, that are, are uh, like the police, the judiciary, the legislature, and even the executive. We need to ensure that the people, the confidence of the people is built. And right now, uh, as the government is being formed, we don't want to see emphasis, we don't want to see a very large government which is consuming taxpayers' money, increasing the recurrent expenditure. We need the government to be small so that more money should go to development. Also, we want to talk about the devolution. And uh, we know that what has happened in the past is that the counties have been stifled of resources. Sometimes the allocations go to the counties very late. We expect the coming administration to ensure that adequate resources 
are given to the counties so that the counties can be able to discharge their services as per the, f the, the fourth schedule, part two. And last but not least, issues of small scale traders, smallholder food producers, issues of, uh, of the youth, uh, the women. We expect the government to ensure that uh, we have adequate resources for all the sectors uh, that are key in, the, in economic development to perform to their best. We also want to say that as CSOs, we will stand our ground in cases where the government wants to tramp upon our rights to organize rights as per Article 37, we shall stand our grounds to ensure that the rights of the CSOs and the rights of Kenyans at large are respected. Thank you so much. Yes, in fact, as, as a sector, we have held that CDF is an illegal fund because the work of uh, the MP, Member of National Assembly, is to check the executive, which means that when the executive is implementing development projects, then the legislature has a responsibility of uh, ensuring or monitoring and ensuring that the development projects are implemented as per the requirement. So the question is, if you, you are a member of parliament and again you are engaged in the implementing development, how can you check yourself? What we need to see is that the legislature, there should be clear separation of roles as per the constitution and we, so that the members, the parliament performs its own distinct role of checking the executive. Because the, right now we don't have an opposition in this country as per the constitution, because you have the minority leader in the, in the National Assembly and also in the Senate. But you see, the, the, in the constitution, parliament forms part of government. So it means that the, the draft of the, of the law placed it in a way that now the legislature needs to perform its role as a check to the executive. They cannot again be part of development, implementing development projects, and then at the same time they want to check themselves. And that's where, that is the genesis of corruption that we see even at the constituency level. It's because it, you know, even, you don't even see the phone, even the World Development Fund, because the, it is the work of the executive to, uh, to implement development projects. And then it is the work of the legislature or the assembly to ensure that they check the legislature in the process of implementing the development. So when you yourself, you, you, you build roads and then you want to monitor and, uh, and actually check on how the roads are built, that is conflict of interest because there's nobody who will say I've used resources wrongly. But when somebody else is implementing them and the other person is observing how it's being implemented, that is the first step of fighting corruption. And that's why uh, we are happy that the court did that. And we want to warn the National Assembly because we already had some of them saying that the first order of business when they reconvene will be to, um, to bring back the CDF. You know, this government is as a result of a court ruling. And some of those members of the National Assembly, Assembly have accepted the court ruling that Kenya Kwanza won. We also want them to accept the ruling of court that CDF is illegal. I'm a member of CSRG. Mimi nataka kuongea tumekubali kwamba matokeo yalitoka kotini na kwa sasa rais wetu ni William Samoei Ruto. Kwa hivyo kuna jil, vile zile jambo ali aidi kutekeleza sana sana kwetu sisi kama wamama moja wao ilikuwa ni upande wa biashara. Hapo kwamba alisema ataweza kupata kuona kwamba tuko na good environment ya, ya biashara na kwamba atakuwa anatupatia loans za kufanya hizi biashara. Tugependa kwamba zitekeleze hizo promises and again tuataka tuwe tukifanya biashara tusiwe tuna watu wa kusumbuliwa manake mara mingi tumeona kwamba tunapofanya biashara wamama wako na hofu juu ujui dakika gani utakuja kuchukuliwa na polisi ufunge biashara yako sasa tugependa tu hiyo biashara vile ali promise aweze kutekeleza na tuwe na environment vizuri ya biashara. Tena kwamba sisi wa mama tungependa ile ile two third gender rule kwa wakati huu iweze kutekelezwa. Manake ile serikali iliyopita tu kuona sana pakubwa pakitekelezwa. Na sasa vile kwamba tumeona tuko na governors saba tuko tuna tumaini na tena tunawahakika kwamba ataiweza kuitekeleza ili sauti yetu kama wamama pia iweze kusikika. Mara mingi wamama wamebaki nyuma sana. 
manake una, unapata unapata wa mama mama kama hawana hawana ajira na kukosa hiyo ajira unapata wa mama wanaenda huko nchi kama Dubai, Saudi Arabia wanaenda kufanya hizo kazi. Na kufanya hizo kazi huko wanadhulumiwa huko wengine wana, wanaenda hapo kama wamekufa. Kama kesi tuli, tuliona juzi hapa tugoba serikali kwamba iweze kutilia hayo mkazo ili kwamba badala kwenda kutafuta kazi huko hizo kazi tunapata hapa tunafuguliwa biashara na tunaweza kunawiri kama wamama kwa nchi yetu tena kwamba tunaona kwamba wamama kwa sana sana wa watoto wetu wachanga wadogo yani ya wa youths wetu wana, wanaingilia kwa early marriages na hizi marriages hizi early marriages leto kwa sababu mtoto anashindwa uh, kuendeleza masomo yake manaka kuna school fees sasa tugependa hii shule ikuwe free from primary to whatever wherever the child atataka kufika tungependa kuambia president wetu ya kwamba sisi kama parents wa mama tunaona mzigo manake school sasa hizi ni begali ukifika secondary school begali mtoto anakuwa nje na ndani ya shule mtoto anapoteza wakati mingi nyumbani manake Uh, school fees haiko ya kutosha. Tunapenda tunamuomba kwamba hii serikali iweze kuhakikisha kwamba education ni free for all. My name is uh, Tom Okech. I'm the national coordinator of the Civil Society Reference Group. Uh, the national uh, the national uh, Civil Society Reference Group is an uh, a network of civil society organizations working in Kenya with over 200 civil society organizations as members of the organization and we work in all sectors of uh, the economy and of this country uh, the supreme court of kenya pronounced itself on the issue of the election of president of kenya and uh, as the law provides that is now uh, what will go by because there is no appeal on uh, the judgment of the supreme court Oh, moving forward uh, from here as the civil society is to call upon all civil society formations and uh, the public to start their work of protecting the constitution of Kenya and checking the government that is coming into place because uh, one of the things that uh, we do not need to uh, sleep over is the issue of uh, Uh, checking accountability of a government that is in place oh, as the civil society we are going to look at the issues of the rule of law we have had issues with the past governments of uh, ignoring court orders but uh, we want to hope and will uh, keep uh, our vigil on the new government that just as the who are happy that uh, the supreme court has pronounced itself and declared them winners of the election then they should go ahead and respect all orders that will be coming from the court or from the judiciary and this includes such orders that are in place that uh, uh, were even uh, made before they came into government uh, they need to respect them and carry them on as they were ordered we look at uh, the work the space the civic space or the, the space that the civil society works and uh, we have seen previously that uh, sometimes governments can want to oh, i mean uh, decrease the space that the civil society works uh, they may no, will not want the civil society to have their voice to pronounce themselves on issues that affect members of the public Uh, this is one thing that we will pronounce ourselves on uh, quite early in time and say that the civil society will always uh, keep the check and will always pronounce itself on any issues that affect members of the public that needs to be addressed we have uh, the, the 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 issue of uh, the laws uh, that govern the civil society and uh, one of them as has been mentioned is the public benefits organizations act that was actually signed into law by president kibaki in 2013 
but has not been implemented or commenced up to today. This is one of the things that we are calling upon the new government to, uh, to commence in their first 100 days that they must commence this law. Because one of the things they said is that they are going to work with the civil society. And this is one way of uh, enabling the civil society to do their work. Uh, we look at the issues that uh, affect the Mwananchi. And uh, the cost of living is very high currently. And uh, the public debt is too high. Uh, it's over 10, billion, uh, 10 trillion. And what we are, we are saying and calling upon the new government is that they should stop uh, taking any more loans and uh, they should open the debt register so that members of the public will know what exactly are the debts that the, the, the Kenya, Kenya as a country is having and what, uh, what, what, how those debts, or rather the, the, the funds that were brought in, how they were used. And if there are any balances of those funds, how they are going to be used uh, on the way forward. We want to know uh, exactly uh, what we, the, the we owe as a country. Uh, for example, the SGR, uh, which is a, a good project, but uh, quite costly, but we don't know exactly know that what were the agreements uh, that our government signed with the funders who funded the SGR. We need to know those things so that we can exactly know how if uh, SGR is a good thing for us or if there are issues and if there, is, are there any, things that, any things that need to be uh, changed or uh, uh, so that it can work well, then we need to do those things. We have issues of unemployment. This government needs to look at issues of manufacturing and ensure that manufacturers are given space and uh, uh, good conditions so that they can continue manufacturing, that we can even attract more funders or, 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 or more companies to come in and uh, set up in Kenya so that we can be able to manufacture and as well create employment. Where we have issues uh, uh, with, the, with the education. Currently, there is a big burden uh, that parents have around education. The cost of education, including primary school, that is supposed to be free. Uh, parents are still burdened to pay uh, for, for a, a quite, quite a number of things for their kids to go to school. High school is expensive. Uh, tertiary education is very expensive. So this government must uh, look into how education can be made affordable so that all Kenyans can be able to go to school up to the point that they may want to go. Not that some will not go to school because they cannot afford education. The issue of healthcare is another. Healthcare is very poor generally in this country. Uh, public health institutions, majority of them do not have uh, uh, facilities that uh, are required, do not have drugs all the time. People go to, to, to public health facilities, they will be told to go and buy drugs, they will be told to go, and, to, go, told to go and do tests outside those facilities. And these are things that uh, are very primary to human life and uh, any government must check uh, that the, uh, the issues of health care, uh, the issues of uh, education are taken care of. So uh, we, we, we want to call upon uh, the opposition or those who are not in government that uh, the way to run a government and, uh, uh, is not for all of them to go and join into the government. We have seen a few people who are elected outside the uh, the, 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 the formations that won the, the elections, that were uh, declared to have won the elections, uh, running into joining uh, those formations. This is not the way to go. Uh, parliament should be able to check uh, the executive. And if, uh, what we are seeing that uh, they are kind of running to the uh, formations that are going to form the executive, uh, we, we are fearful that before long we might not have a proper check for the government that will be in place. So we call upon those who are elected outside the formation of the, uh, the, 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 the government that they stay in their places and they check the government because that is why they were elected. We are, we are also speaking to even county assemblies 
and uh, calling upon them to be able to check the executive at the county government so that because a lot of uh, funds are taken to the counties and we need to see what these funds are doing and if the county assemblies will uh, not do their work of checking the county executive then we'll not have benefit of the funds, the public funds that are sent to the counties. As what we have seen been done with the funds that were sent uh, uh, to the parliamentarians, but there was a gap or there was something wrong with the setting up of CDF. Oh, that, that fund oh, should have been sent to the counties so that the county government can do the implementation or, uh, or, or the development that is required at the county level. Members of parliament, including members of the uh, uh, county assemblies, need to be checking the executive. The county assembly should check the, the county ex executive and should not even have the word development fund. Because as uh, once uh, someone is uh, running or, or managing funds, it is very unlikely that they will hold another person that is managing other, other funds because they, will be, they, they may be as guilty as the other person. So accountability will not be there. So we, we would want the members of the National Assembly not to try to bring back CDF. They must respect the court order and uh, only do their work of checking or the work that is being implemented by the national government and the county government, but not be uh, required to have funds themselves to do development. In that, in that way, then they will not be doing their core duty of uh, making law and ensuring that the, 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 the laws are followed uh, uh, and ensuring that the, the county governments and the national government is working well. They, 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 they will uh, uh, be immersed in the issue of managing the funds that are there, they are given and will not do their duty. So what we are saying as I said, the civil society is that CDF must remain illegal to parliamentarians. And these funds should be sent to the county governments for development. That's what we are saying. You, the government introduced a free primary education. And uh, what was expected with the free prim primary education is that all uh, the, the burden of paying school fee and uh, buying school equipment and even uh, uh, buying the, 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 the utilities that are required in school, that burden was going to be removed from parents. Uh, and uh, this is not happening as uh, had been um, thought. Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, parents are still required to pay, and in some instances, even paying much more than what they could have pay, paid a school fee. So we call upon the new government, we call upon the government of uh, uh, President William Ruto, that they must ensure that education and primary education or basic education, which actually should run up to high school, that's what we should call basic education, should be free. And when we say free, should not just be free by the word and not free in reality. The, the, the education inspectors must ensure that there are no uh, new, new, new charges, levies uh, introduced by maybe school management or uh, regions to still get uh, a demand that parents pay for certain things, which then makes education unequal. Because there are those who can be able to pay those levies, and there are those who cannot pay those levels, levies. So it makes education unequal, and will mean that the, 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 the poor uh, regions of the country will always remain behind in education, because they cannot afford to take their children to school as other regions that uh, can afford. So we call upon the incoming government to ensure that basic education is free. Sir, we are now the opposition. Kwa 
na hali kadhaa na visi sasa itabidi tu tuungane kwa by force yani tukaa kaa jeshi tu yani lazima ni protect ndio na mimi niwe protected mungu abariki